go a bit deeper into different types of methods in phylogenetics. Uh, there are two main types of methods. One are the distance based methods and the others are the character based methods. And um, so as the name indicates there is a difference between the distance based method and character based method. The, the character based methods are actually a, any nucleotide or amino acid at a site in DNA or protein or, or any sequence or the presence or absence or deletion of any site that is each nucleotide or amino acid site in a DNA protein sequence can be considered as a character site. So here in the first section of the slide you can see that I have put an example of the character based method. So here you can see that there are some nucleotides or amino acids and each nucleotide or is considered as a site along with another example of any absence or presence of a site. For example, here you can see that there is a A is present at this site, this site, but here is a in red you can see there is there are, there are the deletions. So character based methods consider each position as one site be it a nucleotide, a protein sequence or any absence or presence of a site, right. And based on these character uh, sites the, and the comparison, they build a phylogenetic tree uh, and uh, in this type of uh, method, uh, it is known as the character based methods. The next is the distance based methods. In distance based method, actually it is uh, more different uh, compared to the character in the distance based method, it calculates the overall differences between the sequences of different species available. For example, here you can see that there are five species A, B, C, D, e, D and E and uh, based on the overall sequence alignment, distance based methods will calculate the overall difference between each of the species with the rest of the species under study uh, and calculate the difference and then build a matrix and based on that matrix the overall difference a phylogenetic tree is generated like here. So in so it is a bit different than the uh, character based methods in a way that the distance based method does not consider each site and uh, as a site but it calculates the overall difference between the sequence. So the distance based methods are relatively quicker, faster compared to character based method because it deals with the overall data but not with the site one by one. So that is why character based methods are little bit uh, slower, not little bit uh, slower compared to the distance based methods, right. So now we will go into the examples of the character based method. Uh, there are two types of character based methods, the most one of the most famous ones are the maximum parsimony pre method and maximum likelihood pre methods. And for the distance based method there are two main uh, mainly known those are the UPGMA and neighbor joining method. So first we go into the example of the character based method and here we have took an example of maximum parsimony tree. The main idea of character based method is to search for, for a tree that requires the smallest number of evolutionary changes to explain the differences among the OTUs under study. Such a tree is called maximum parsimonious tree. Like the tree which is actually built uh, using the maximum parsimony try to identify the tree which was generated using the minimum number of evolutionary changes between the different species under study. If they are uh, comparing five different species then from the ancestor to the last uh, uh, most recent species the maximum parsimony tree will ge generate a tree which will show minimum number of changes. So here we have took an example to make it more simpler that as an example uh, tree building uh, using maximum parsimony we consider these four taxa or we can say these are the sequence of a species, a sequence of a population or anything. Like here you can see that A, A, here one is uh, 1, 
two, three, four. There are four taxa. And our question is that how might they have evolved from a common ancestors that is triple A. So for that maximum parsimony tree will try to identify the most simplest method uh, of generating the tree. So here you can see that my, if the most com uh, common ancestor was triple A and we wanted to identify these four different taxa which were mentioned in the previous slide that how they were originated. The maximum parsimony tree will try to find the minimum number of evolutionary changes to reach at this point in these three, four species. So here you can see there are three examples from left to right. In the most left uh, op, uh, tree you can see that from the uh, e, e, e in the first point here, from here uh, there are there are two main uh, species originated. This is predicted by the maximum parsimony. Like if A, A uh, there is one change in at the second site of A, it will generate A G A. And if there is a uh, another, there is no change in the other species, then triple A, right? Again here. And after, if there is a, these triple A species evolve into two different um, main other species or other taxa, and there is only one change that will lead to AAG, AAA. And here, if there is a change in the leftmost side, and it will change it to GGA and it will convert it into GGA here, and the same AGA. So there are th total three three changes in the uh, in this species. During the, during the evolution, this is just a sample example, you cannot take it as a real species or any real taxa, just showing you how the maximum parsimony tree method works. So the only three min, uh, number of changes led to the formation or origination of these four different taxas, right? So these four are actually the same which are mentioned here, right? AAG, AAA, GGA, AGA, right? And, uh, if we, if uh, similarly, if you look at the uh, the second example here, you, you can see the same number of taxa originated, but the number of amino acid or uh, nucleotide changes are different. Uh, total number of changes are four. Here, you can re uh, check that from AAA, there was no change in this AAA, and then there is a two changes at GGA, and uh, one change for AGA and one change for AAG. So total number of changes are four. And for the last, you can see again, there's another way of predicting the four sequences. So there are a number of ways a tree can be generated uh, to identify and to predict the most uh, how these four different tags are originated. So you can conclude from this that in the maximum parsimony, we have to choose the tree with the lowest cost. And here you can easily infer that the sequence with the lowest cost was the first one because the total number of changes were only three, right? So this is how maximum parsimony works. This is just a basic sample example. Obviously, if you dig deeper into the different literature and different types of algorithms and different modifications of maximum parsimony, then you will learn more and uh, yeah. So. This is the one uh, example of uh, maximum parsimony method. And uh, similarly, but the, uh, the distance-based method is slightly uh, different and quicker compared to uh, maximum parsimony or character-based methods. Here, as I s explained, that building a phylogenetic tree by distance-based method is uh, quite different. General principle is First, we have to have a number of sequences. For example, we have five species, five sequences, sequence A to B, C, D, E. We will just put those, all the sequences under any sequence alignment method or, and after generating the alignment, the phylogenetic uh, tree will calculate a mat first a matrix based on the total number of differences in the sequence alignment one by one. For example, the total number of differences between the sequence A versus B, C, D, and E, then the differences between B and A, C, D, E, and the rest of the rest of the all the sequences. So based on the differences, it will calculate 
and build a overall matrix for evolutionary distance and based on that uh, total number of differences the tree will be generated that can be uh, that will be the unrooted tree it will just based on the estimation of all the differences it will calculate and make a cluster of the gene uh, species which are closely related and which are distantly related and it will build a tree right so uh, you can see here that there is a bit uh, difference between max, uh, character based methods and distance based method and uh, you can also clearly see the, the that the f trees which are built using the distance based methods can be quicker because it calculates the overall difference and just generate a tree whereas in the character based methods it has to take uh, into account the all the all the sequence sites and calculate the difference at each site one by one and to predict the minimum number of changes to build the best possible tree right so in the next uh, uh, part of this lecture we will go into a more deeper in, and to see how uh, the distance based methods works and how they calculate the distance between the species, how they calculate, estimate the evolutionary distance between the species to exactly estimate, try to ex estimate the best possible phylogenetic tree. Thank you very much. Uh,